22 laps remaining here at Nashville Super Speedway. Reed Sorensen continues to lead he, by nearly 10 seconds over John Wood. We go to Dick Berger. And here's the right front that just came off Martin Truax's car. You can see the damage here. Problem is, the tire then went flat. This is exactly the same kind of damage that Reed Sorensen suffered earlier in the race. But he had the advantage of the tire holding air. He got a pit stop under caution. No harm, no foul. Sorensen's leading the race. Truax isn't. Yeah, the problem, Dick, is uh, they were running there in the top five. Very lucky that that race car didn't get crashed with that right front tire. But now he's back in 17th position, two laps down. Remember, he came in here in fifth. You talked about it the, in the pre-race, uh, Steve, 127 points behind. So this will be another big lick for this race team today in the points. Sorensen's lead now 10 seconds over John Wood in the 47 car. Sorensen grew up outside of Atlanta, Georgia, still lives there today. Now, the thing that'll be interesting, John Wood in the 47 car, remember Jeff Hammond talked a while ago that these guys were pretty confident they could not make it to the end. It sounds like they do possibly do not want to take a chance to run out of fuel. I would say this late in the race, as good as this tire seems to be, they may try to do a gas and go where they do not lose a, lose a lap. Maybe they can stay on the lead lap. All right, we'll be back and see how that plays out. 18 laps to go here at Nashville. You're watching FX in the NASCAR Bush Series. Thirteen laps to go, still under green flag conditions. John Wood has made his pit stop. Well, again, I think Jay Guy had banked on the fact they would get another caution. They could not make it to the end, but as I kind of anticipated here, with about 13 or 14 laps to go, gas only, just enough fuel to get him to the end. And this will be a good run. His best finish of 2005 has been a 16th at Mexico. We anticipate he's going to go close to a lap down as he's back out on the racetrack. And right now he's showing in the 13th position, but his best finish was 16th at Mexico. Regardless of where he finishes, this has been a good run for this race team, especially when you look at the damage they had to overcome on that right front. I should also mention Johnny Sauter pitted gave up the eighth position on lap 211. And he, like John Wood, they stayed out back on lap 152. We pretty much knew that Johnny Sauter was going to have to come to pit road. You see him there in the one car. His team elected Joe Shearer Jr., the crew chief, to change right side tires and fuel. And right now, he's out there in the 15th position, two laps down. Dick Bergeron. Well, Johnny Sauter has just hit the radio and said something is bad wrong with the car. The crew now up on the wall with the two fresh tires that they still have left for the left side. Right now, he is still out on the racetrack. He is in 15th position and may have to pit again. Dick, I'm going to go back to what David Strimmey said in an interview before the car. I think what happens with this tire combination is right side tires throw the car so out of balance with those older left side tires. Yeah, they don't want to stay around out there and hit the wall with a flat tire or something, but I think he's got a product of very old left side tires and very new right side tires. I would encourage him to feel it out just a little bit, definitely before you come back to pit road. It looks like both left side tires look fine. The only other problem that could exist would be a loose lug nut or something on the right sides they just put on. And right now, we only have nine laps to go, and he's sitting there running in the 15th position. Reed Sorensen making just his 11th start. He has more on Bobby Hamilton, though. Yes, I do right now. Uh, Bobby Hamilton has been told by his crew chief, hey, you need to save fuel. We're going to be real close with the pace we're running right now. You need to conserve fuel. Also, the 22 car, Kenny Wallace, believe it or not, these guys are a little bit concerned about their fuel situation also. So they told Kenny, you can't catch Reed. Let's save fuel. We need to finish second. Again, these guys are thinking about the big picture and trying to make it to the end. And I think that most of these guys were on pit road as we ride with Kenny Wallace, and he's up in the second position right now. They pitted with 73 laps to go. We saw the fuel window between 78 laps at top of the fuel. But I think basically what Bobby Hamilton, his guys are seeing, with the track cooling down, the pace is picked up. And when you're running faster, you're using more fuel. But right now, when I look at Kenny Wallace, he's 13 seconds behind Reed Sorensen. He can save a little fuel, just like Bobby Hamilton Jr. It's four seconds up to the fifth place car and three seconds back to the seventh place car. So it'd be easy here with only seven laps to go for these cars to somewhat conserve a little bit of fuel. Just his 11th NASCAR Bush Series start, Reed Sorensen trying to nail down the victory. 
Kenny Wallace is second, Shane Meal third, Carl Edwards fourth, Clint Boyer in the two car is fifth. Jeff Hammond just talked about Bobby Hamilton. He rides sixth. And then right behind him, Tony Raines in the 33 car up to the seventh position. You talked about it earlier, Steve. Had that tire issue early, got a lap down, got the free pass, and there he is up there in the top ten. Be a good run for Tony Raines here. And right now, Reed Sorensen, he's starting to catch more lap cars. As he comes around, we will basically have five laps to go. He just needs to pick and choose where he goes by these cars with that 13, almost 14-second lead. If Reed can hang on, he will be the second first-time Bush Series winner this year. Tony Stewart, the other at Daytona. And this has been a flawless weekend for this group, and I know we have about four and a half laps to go. They were the fastest in one practice, second quickest in another practice yesterday. They sat on the pole, and they've led now 192 of basically 221 laps. The only laps they have not led by virtue of cars staying out of cars changing two tires. There, I need to correct myself. Carl Edwards, the other first-time winner this year, he won last week and, of course, won both races. we got a smoker on the excess road coming to pit road, Randy LaJour in the 34 car, but I think uh, he got to the excess road on the back stretch well before maybe putting anything down. So the guy that 11th place in points, he'll make that left-hand turn to the garage here. It looks like the engine has expired. And we'll stay green. Three laps to go for Reed Sorensen. He still has several cars in front of him, three or four cars that he's probably going to catch. He's going to pass one of them here on the back stretch. This time he'll have two laps to go for Reed Sorensen. Sun setting over turn four here in Nashville. And I think the sun's setting on this 300-mile race for Reed Sorensen and the rest of the field right now. Two to go. And that car has not bobbled all day long. It has been right around the bottom of the racetrack. Car comes off the corner good. It's just, it's basically been flawless. Reed Sorensen down into turn three. He'll get the white flag this time by the start finish line. He has one more car in front of him, but right now he has almost a 15 second lead. I think if I was Brian Patty, those guys, I'd just say, look, just back off right now and just run this last three quarters of a lap. Sorensen will join Greg Biffle, Scott Riggs, Jack Sprague, David Green, Michael Waltrip, and Jason Leffler as winners here at the Nashville Super Speedway. As he enters turn four, Checkered flag, this time by for 19-year-old Reed Sorensen as he picks up his first career NASCAR Bush Series victory. And we knew it was only a matter of a time. I talked about it a second ago, Steve, as you see this crew. Remember, this was the crew one week ago in Atlanta that basically was loading their car up before the race. They did not make the race. So what a turnaround. There you see Brian Patty right there. The crew chief uh, gets his first win with Reed Sorensen, won a ton of races with Joe Nemechek over at Nimco Motorsports, but what a turnaround for this race team. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Well, all day long, you were telling your driver to be smooth, be smooth. Did he get the message? Uh, I'm pretty sure he did. Uh, you know, last week was a tough week for us, and we had the rebound. I mean, it shows the character of him, just character of our race team. We went back, we tested hard this week, two places. Uh, we're gonna test next week again. It's not over. How is it that a young man 19 years old with so little experience in these kinds of cars on this kind of racetrack has won today? Uh, that's our money car. That's a good car. And, uh, you know, he, he just adapted very well here. We didn't test here. Uh, the only laps he's had here is whenever he uh, was trying to get the Ganassi developmental deal. So uh, I was a little worried. Uh, but, you know, I've had good cars here before. And, uh, you know, he adapted really fast. And uh, this, the, the tire rule, the way it worked out, NASCAR has it. Uh, you know, we, the whole first set of tires, we just burn up in race trim and, and didn't worry about qualifying. And he sits on a pole and wins the race. This is fantastic. So maybe he had a good crew chief too, huh, Steve Burns? I'll say. We'll come back and talk to Reed Sorensen about his first Bush Series victory. As Brian Paddy congratulates Chip Ganassi. We'll be back to Nashville. NASCAR on FX is brought to you by Wind Fuel, by Aaron's, 
by Nextel and by Sears Craftsman.